Hey everybody and welcome back to the Creative Kindergarten YouTube channel. My name is Amanda and I'm an early childhood educator in Ontario, Canada. And today I wanted to talk to you a little bit about uh, how I introduce directional coding to my kindergarten students. I love to teach coding to my um, kindergarten kids. Uh, it's one of those things that I look forward to doing every year with them. And so I thought I would show you a little bit about how like directional coding works so that you can pass on this information to your students as well and you won't be so you know I know it can be a little bit intimidating to start teaching coding to kids but really once I break it down for you you're going to think it's so easy and it's going to be something that you're going to be really excited to embed into your program I of course have a bunch of different blog posts on how I teach coding skills to kindergarten students and I will link those all in the description for you so that you can go check them out as well but you know I talk about it a lot over on my podcast and on Instagram all the time and I'm always talking about oh it's so much easier to like show how to code rather than talk about it and I'm like realizing like I have a YouTube channel to be able to show you guys things like this so I thought I would pull out my whiteboard and you know show you a little bit about coding and what it are like directional coding and what it's about basically directional coding is trying to get something from point A to point B and you're just giving instructions on how to do that using arrows. So basically, you're going to have to start off with some kind of a grid. I know I just did those two, but it'll be easier if I start with the grid first. And the grid can be as big or as small as you want it to be. Typically, I print these out. I have an unplugged coding pack that I will link in the show notes for you that makes this really, uh, in the description for you, that makes this really easy if you just want something to print and go. But you can have this, um, a grid, you know, taped on a desk or on a table with like pieces of, you know, masking tape and create a grid that way. It can be one that you print out. It can be one um, that you create with chalk on the floor and the plate on the asphalt in the playground, the grid, doesn't matter like how it's created, how big it is, how small it is, how, if the pieces are perfectly square, it just needs to have, you know, spaces that you can put things in. That's basically what you want. So with directional coding, what you want to do is if you start at point A, down over here, and then you want to get to point B, you are going to code some arrows to show how you would get something from point A to point B. And literally, that is all it is. So I would have to go up and then up and make a turn and then across to get to B. And I've just coded with arrows how I would get to point A to point B. And of course you can make it more complicated by making the grid bigger. You can make it less complicated by, you know, um, just having um, a smaller grid. You can add obstacles to it to make it more complicated. You can have different points where they have to go to A and then they have to go to C. So then they have to keep coding to get to the next point. You can really like do a whole bunch of things with it. So basically what your code is, my code is going to be up one space and then sometimes depending on, you know, if you use a B-Bot, I don't know if you um, have ever seen this, it's a coding robot. If you use a B-Bot, the um, turn and the move is two separate codes. So, so if you'll see it on a B-Bot, I think it looks like this and that's like the turn. So if you have to turn right to go towards the right, that's two separate codes. So right and then move to that space would be two separate ones. When I'm doing unplugged coding like this, I have the turn and the move over one space all in one code. So I have that as set as one move and then they would have to go over another one and then down one to get to C. That is the code that you use to code from A to B to C. That's it, that's directional coding. You've That's all you've had to do right there. Um, with the kids, um, if you're making a code just with like tape or using um, it outside, you can make arrows. Uh, I know they sell like wooden arrows that you can buy, but I've made uh, arrows out of uh, cardboard. I'll try to put up a picture here of what that would look like. I've made um, a coding grid out of like um, recycled materials and then the the, the arrows that are recycled materials. Again, the unplugged coding bundle that I have has all that included so that you can just print everything and you're ready to go. But yeah, that is basically unplugged coding. Again, you can make it a little bit more complicated if you want to. Again, making it bigger would be one way or you can add obstacles. So let's say you're starting at A, but you need to get to B that's over here. 
but you know there's a tree in the way here and a tree in the way here and a one in the way here these are my trees they're pine trees can you tell I don't know but then so they can't just code directly to point B over here by going direct they have to go around the pine trees and so you're coding around the obstacle. So an easy way to make it a little bit more complicated, I've used a twister mat, you know, the big twister mat to play twister on. I've used that as a coding grid. So each circle is one and I just printed out big um, arrows off of like uh, Microsoft Word or something. And I laminated those. I'll try to put a picture of that here again, um, just to show you a little bit about what that would look like. You can really use a bunch of different things as, you know, um, coding grids. And you again can make it as complicated or as uncomplicated as you want if you do it outside on the asphalt i've seen it done where you know it's the kids that are physically moving they're not just like um writing arrows down on a piece of paper or using arrows they're physically moving their own bodies and so you'll have one kid on the coding grid where they have to get to a certain um spot on the grid and it's a kid off to the side who's telling them move forward one spot turn to the right move forward one spot and they're giving the coding directions in that way and you can have them writing down their coding directions as they go on like a whiteboard or something but yeah you can do it that way if you want to get into doing robots, the B-Bot is a great one to introduce directional coding to your students um, in a really great, um, fun way. I think the Code and Go Mouse is another one that uses directional coding as well. But yeah, if you want to just start teaching your kids how to code in kindergarten, this is all you need. A grid, some arrows, something on point A and something on point B and you're ready to go and you're teaching coding to your kindergarten students, you're teaching them you know, how to problem solve, how to break down things into individual steps. You're ta talking to them about the language they're using when they're coding. And it's really all that problem solving that's coming out, working on so many skills and it's so complicated. And it's, you know, not as scary as you first think, like you hear, oh, I have to teach kids how to code. And, you know, you start getting a little scared about it. It's not that complicated. It can be really easy. So let me know down below. Do you teach coding skills to your students? Leave me a comment. Let me know. Do you start with directional coding? Do you like to do robots with your students? I'd love to hear your experiment experience with coding in the kindergarten classroom. And, you know, if you like this video, make sure you hit that like button and um, leave me uh, subscribe to my channel so that you'll be up to date whenever I post out new videos like this one just showing you different ways that I teach different skills to my kindergarten students thank you so much for joining me and I will talk to you all next time bye